Good morning and uh, welcome here this morning to morning prayer on um, Friday the 3rd of September. I hope this finds you well in good hearts and in good spirits. Um, uh, indeed, it's a pleasure to be with you today. Things are starting to return back to some sense of normality. Um, Pippa wants to be part of everything again. Um, obviously getting a little bit cooler outside so she feels that she needs to be uh, inside. Uh, Jacob's gone to school today so he's back. Uh, Lily doesn't go back until Monday um, uh, and uh, yes it, it's all feeling very much like a, in a, a sense of normality I suppose you might say. Just a few quick notices. Uh, just a notice to say that uh, we have services at um, South Marston, Stanton, and um, Stratton this week, half past nine uh, at all three. Um, please, it would be uh, if you're able to go, that'd be fantastic. But we will also have our ten o'clock service on Facebook as uh, Facebook and uh, YouTube as well so um, all those different opportunities that there uh, that there may be to come together to worship indeed yeah right. uh, I've got some things on my screen which I'm going to try and get rid of because I can't actually see everything Give me tips oh there we go yeah, you can just you can just see the head or there we go you can just if I raise my legs a little bit you can just see Pippa's ears, she's sat on my lap at the moment uh, and you may well be able to hear her better than you can see her. Uh, you might be able to hear her purring. Um, oh, just reminding me, she's just reminding me that she's here, aren't you? Cool. Yes, I know you're here. So today we remember Gregory the Great, Bishop of Rome, teacher of the faith from 604. I'll just get my book. Oh, sorry, Pepper. Oh. Oh, so we've had some big hitters recently. Augustine, uh, John Bunyan was um, the 30th, I think it was the 30th, that was Sunday, you know, Sunday, Monday. Giles of Provence, Aidan, Bishop of Lindisfarne, uh, and today, um, Gregory the Great. Ooh. Known as the father of the medieval papacy, Gregory's list of achievements is lengthy, as well as being an incumbent an, an accomplished law student, Gregory founded monasteries, contributed finance to many works, reformed the church leadership in Rome, set one liturgical reform and organised missionaries to the Anglo-Saxons. Gregory was born in 540 to an aristocrat aristocratic family of piety and scholarship that had already produced two popes. Brought up in the climate of cultural renewal, uh, Gregory studied grammar dialectic and rhetoric. He was made prefect of Rome in 572 where he honed the administrative and political skills which would equip him for his later roles. He entered the monastic life in 574, establishing and endowing six monasteries on his family land and one in Rome itself. In 579 he was sent to Constantinople where he stayed until 586. It was during this period that he wrote his best theological commentaries. On his return to Rome, Gregory acted as advisor and secretary to Pelagius II, whom he succeeded as Pope in 590. Gregory discovered Rome in a miserable state, devoid of any real leadership, not only in the church but also in the wider city. In 592, 93, the Italian peninsula was under the threat from the Lombards and rather than allow the invaders to deal, 
to deal with an inadequate state leadership, Gregory took over the responsibility from state control, organising bread supplies and providing for the city's defence. Such was his administrative ability and leadership that by the end of the 6th century, and with the Lombards repelled, the whole peninsula came under papal rule. One of Gregory's projects was the sending of missionaries to the Anglo-Saxons, and he commissioned both Augustine, the 26th of May, and Melitus, who celebrates on the 24th of April. The enormous numbers of letters that he wrote to these two missionaries meant that his influence was even felt after his death. Gregory's period as Pope marks the transition from the ancient world of Imperial Rome to a medieval Christendom united by the Roman Catholic Church. The reach and extent of the papal authority increased dramatically. As Europe entered the Middle Ages, it was as a Christian civilization, not only united by the Catholic Church, but to a great extent led by its supreme ruler, the Pope in Rome. Despite the great changes that occurred during his life, Gregory was recorded as a man of humility and peace, and preferred his title as Pope was the servant of the servants of God. He was unafraid to stand for Christian truth in a changing and challenging world, and challenged those in his charge also to do, uh, to do so also. And this is part of Gregory's um, commentary on Ezekiel. If a preacher does not denounce the wicked, he himself be reckoned guilty. For only one who is not afraid to say what is what they rightly feel and does not blush to do so ought to be a defender of the truth. The preacher is a physician who does not blush to prescribe the medicines. Hmm. Some great wisdom there. Out of all of those paragraphs that I've just read, I think the last paragraph, um, apart from what he wrote, the last paragraph I think is very powerful. Gregory is recorded as a man of humility and peace and preferred his, his title as Pope was the servant of the servants of God. He was unafraid to stand for Christian truth in a changing and challenging world and challenged those in his charge to do so also. Gregory the Great, Bishop of Rome. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Scroll down just a little bit. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving and be glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth and the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and the hands, his hands have moulded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down, and kneel, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts as at Meribah, on that day at Massa in the wilderness, when your forebears tested me and put me to the proof, though they had seen my works. Forty years long I detested that generation and said, this people, this, this people are wayward in their hearts. They do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, 
so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. I'm going to use Psalm 144. So if you just scroll down a little bit, if you're following uh, on the app or on the website, Psalm 144. Happy are the people who have the Lord for their God. Blessed be the Lord, the, my rock, who teaches my hands for war and my fingers for battle, my steadfast help and my fortress, my stronghold and my deliverer, my shield in whom I trust, who subdues the peoples under me. O oh Lord, what are mortals that you should consider them, mere human beings that you should take thought of them, for them. They are like the breath of wind, their days pass away like a shadow. Bow your heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains, and they shall smoke. Cast down your lightnings and scatter them. Shoot out your arrows and let thunder roar. Reach down your hand from on high. Deliver me and take me out of the great waters, from the hands of the foreign enemies, whose mouth speaks wickedness and their right hand is the hand of falsehood. O oh God, I will sing to you a new song. I will play to you on a ten-stringed harp. You that give salvation to kings, and have delivered David your servant. Save me from the peril of the sword, and deliver me from the hand of the foreign enemies, whose mouth speaks wickedness, and whose right hand is the hand of falsehood so that our sons in their youth may be well-nurtured plants, and our daughters like pillars carved for the corners of the temple. Our barns be filled with all manner of store, our flocks bearing thousands and ten thousands in our fields. Our cattle be heavy with young, may there be no miscarriage or untimely birth, no cry of distress in our streets. Happy are the people whose blessing this is. Happy are the people who have the Lord for their God. Happy are the people who have the Lord for their God. Let us pray. God, our Deliverer, stir our weak wills, revive our weary spirits, and give us the courage to strive for the freedom of all your children to the praise of your glorious name. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Continue to read Proverbs chapter 30. Today we are reading from verses 1 to 9, and then 24 through to 31. Proverbs chapter 30, 1 to 9, and then 24 to 31. The words of Agus, son of Jacob, an oracle. Thus says the man, I am weary, O God. I am weary, O God. How can I prevail? Surely I am too stupid to be human. I do not have human understanding. I have not learned wisdom, nor have I knowledge of the holy ones, who has ascended into heaven and come down, who has gathered the wind in the hollow of the hand, of the hand who has wrapped up the waters in a garment, who has established all the ends of the earth. What is the person's name? And what is the name of the person's child? Surely you know. Every word of God proves true. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Do not add to his words, or else he will rebuke you, and you will be found a liar. Two things I ask of you. Do not deny that, them to me before I die. Remove far from me falsehood and lying. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food that I need, or I shall be full and deny you, and say, Who is the Lord? Or I shall be poor and steal, and profane the name of the Lord. Four things on earth are small, yet are exceedingly wise. they are exceedingly wise. The ants are the people without strength yet they provide their food in the summer. The badgers are a people without power, 
yet make their homes in the rocks. The locusts have no king, yet all of them march in rank. The lizard can be grasped in the hand, yet it is found in king's palaces. Three things have stately in their stride, four are stately in their gait, the lion which is the mightiest among wild animals, and does not turn back before any, the strutting rooster, the he-goats, and a king striding before his people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It takes some uh, interpretation, I suppose, some reading that passage. And um, uh, Peter Greystone writes a reflection which I'll read in a moment. We move on to this canticle. Raise us up, O God, that we may live in your presence. Come, let us return to the Lord, who has torn us and will heal us. God has stricken us, has stricken us and will bind up our wounds. After two days he will revive us, and on the third day will raise us up, that we may live in his presence. Let us strive to know the Lord. His appearing is as sure as the sunrise. He will come to us like the showers, like the spring rains that water the earth. O oh, Ephraim, how shall I deal with you? How shall I deal with you, O oh Judah? Your love for me is like the morning mist, like the dew that goes early away. Therefore I have hewn them by my prophets, and my judgment goes forth as the light. For loyalty is my desire and not sacrifice and the knowledge of God, rather than burnt offerings. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Raise us up, O God, that we may live in your presence. Our reading from the Old Testament today comes from Mark, Mark chapter 9, beginning to read at verse 14. Excuse me, I'm just taking a slurp. Yeah, sorry, none for you. When they came to the disciples, they saw a great crowd among, around them, and some scribes arguing, them, arguing with them. When the whole crowd saw him, they were immediately overcome with awe, and they ran forward to greet him. He asked them, What are you arguing about with them? Someone from the crowd answered him, Teacher, I brought you my son. He has a spirit that makes him unable to speak, and whenever it seizes him, it dashes him down, and he foams and grinds his teeth, and becomes rigid. Rigid. And I asked your disciples to cast it out, but they could not do so. He answered them, you faithless generation, how much longer must I be among you? How much longer must I put up with you? Bring him to me. And they brought the boy to him. When, he, when the spirit saw him, immediately it threw the boy into convulsions, and he fell on the ground and rolled about, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the father, How long has this been happening to him? And he said, From childhood. He often cast him into a fire, and into the water to destroy him. But if you are able to do anything, have pity on us and help us. Jesus said to him, If you are able, all things can be done for the one who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out, I believe, help my unbelief. When the crowd saw that, when Jesus saw that a crowd came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, you spirit that keeps this boy from speaking and hearing, I command you, come out of him, and never enter him again. After crying out and convulsing, and convulsing him terribly, it came out, and the boy was like a corpse, so most of them said, he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand, and lifted him up, and he was able to stand. When he had entered the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast out? He said to them, This kind can come out only through prayer. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Another remarkable healing of deliverance. Jesus bringing life, um, bringing life to um, those around him, those that came to him. Something which, oh, excuse me, something which something which he always did and his disciples were learning to do and his disciples were doing but they still needed Jesus Peter Greystone writes writes on this passage from Proverbs and he particularly focuses on give me neither poverty nor riches. Nobody knows who Agur was but this chapter has kept his reputation alive for centuries on the basis of these riddling verses I find him immense, immensely likeable. Unlike his humility he introduces himself as someone who has no great shakes as an academic but muddles through as best as he can because of his awe when he considers God. The answer to his question is, in verse 4, is, not me, not anybody, God alone. His sense of the magnitude of what God wants to communicate with us is a caution to all who preach or write. Their role is not to draw attention to themselves, but to make sure that people can hear from God directly. I like his contentment with just with having just enough. His prayer for neither too little nor too much is formidable repost to anyone who teaches that the more faithful you are to God, the more prosperous you will become. I like his witty way with a poem. The repeated pattern of listing three things and adding a fourth draws attention to the importance of the final one. He encourages those who feel as insignificant as a lizard that they should not underestimate their potential to influence people. He urges political leaders to prioritise uniting their people. In verses not included in today's reading, Agur reveals himself to be, be sweetly romantic. I can't help liking that too. That's in Proverbs 18, uh, sorry, verse 30, 18 to 90, 18 to 19. I can find it. So this is what this is what uh, he writes in um, verses 18 and 19. There are three things that are too amazing for me. Four that I do not understand: the way that an, of an eagle in the sky, the way of a snake on a rock, the way of a ship on the high seas, and the way of a man with a maiden. Yes. Pippa's had the word. Now she's going to ponder. We continue with these responses. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Be not far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. Those who are wise will shine as brightly as the heavens. And those who have instructed many in virtue will shine like stars for all eternity. 
Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Those who are wise will shine as brightly as the heavens, and those who have instructed many in virtue will shine like stars for all eternity. We come to our time of intercession, where we continue our prayers. Excuse me, let me just... Um, when I say, Lord, receive our praise, Please could you respond with and hear our prayer. We pray for God's grace. Lord receive our praise and hear our prayer. Lord God through your grace we are your people. Through your son you have redeemed us. In your spirit you have made us your own. We pray for your church. As your people, Lord, help us to shine your light. Help us to follow the example that we have seen in others of those who have proclaimed your word by what they have said and by what they have done. We pray, dear Father, that we'll be ready to serve you and to serve one another, to be a blessing to each other and our communities as we proclaim your name. We pray, dear Father, that we'll be inspired by your Spirit to know what to do. Give us a vision, Lord, of how we can show our love and your love to the world around us. We thank you for the blessings that we receive from others, from our Christian brothers and sisters, locally, nationally and internationally. We thank you, dear Father, for those that have helped us on our journey, perhaps even without knowing it. And we pray, dear Father, that we may in turn help others on our journey. So just for a moment, perhaps you'd like to lift people before God who you wish to, to hear his word and to know his love this day. Make our hearts, Lord, respond to your love. Lord, receive our praise and hear our prayer. We pray for the world, dear Lord. We pray especially at this time for Afghanistan, for those that have left Afghanistan, 
with just the shirt on their back and maybe a, a little more than that. We pray for them, those who are in, who have come to this country in hotels at the moment, unsure of what is to come, in quarantine because of COVID, unsure of where they will be. Open our hearts, Lord, to know what we can do to share your love and to offer the hope you have set before us all. We pray, dear Father, for those affected by um, the, the extreme weather at the moment. We pray for those affected in the States. For those affected around the world, Lord, with um, far less robust infrastructure and services. We pray, dear Father, for those who have been made homeless, for those in, in Europe that have been made homeless after a few, um, after the, the floods of a few weeks ago. And we pray, dear Father, that leaders will come together and, uh, and populations will come together, not only just to prepare for future events, but look to really take care of the planet and everybody recognise that we all have a part to play. Give wisdom's leaders, give wisdom, the courage and vision to leaders as they meet together in a few weeks' time. We pray for those places affected by disasters such as earthquakes and I think particularly still think of Haiti. May not be in the news, but the struggle continues. We pray for those places around the world where there is conflict. Indeed, we do pray for Afghanistan. We pray for those left there, for those in fear. We pray, dear Father, for governments of righteousness and justice to prevail wherever they may be, whether that's in Afghanistan, uh, in this country, in the States, in Russia, in Saudi Arabia, or wherever it may be. We pray for leaders of wisdom and righteousness and justice. We pray for your kingdom to come, Lord. And as we pray for peace around the world, in each corner of the world, make us, help us to remember that peace begins with us. So make our lives bear witness to your glory in the world. Lord, receive our praise and hear our prayer. We pray for those who are in need this day. For those struggling in body, mind or spirit. We lift before you, dear Father, all those who are on our hearts and on our minds. Those whom we are worried about. Those whom we are looking after. And we name just some of those. Trudy, Mark, Addie, William, Pauline, Linda, Roy, Stuart, Beryl, Eunice, 
George, Bob, John, Mary, Jordan, Mary, Andy, Natalie, John, Janet, Annette, Jim, Joe and the family, John, Liz, Dave and the family, Daniel, pray for Peter and Alvin and their family today, especially thinking of them as it is Hazel's funeral later. Lift before you Shane, Tilly, Jan, Linda and her family, Chris, Oliver and his parents, Chris and Danielle, Anna, Angela, especially as she awaits her surgery next week, Mary, Roger, Chris, Martina and her mum Trudel and their family and Sylvia, Andy, Catherine, she awaits her surgery in a few weeks time. Anne, Sarah, Nicholas, Martin, Pat, Jeff and Hilary, Tom, Julie, Esme, Nilva and her family, Len, Margaret's family, Finley, John and Val, Peter and Bridget, Ken, Eric's friends and family, Rose, Barbara and Geraldina's friends and family. May they know your presence and feel your healing touch in their lives and in their hearts. May they know your comfort this day, Lord. And make our wills eager to obey and our hands ready to heal. Lord, receive our praise and hear our prayer. Dear Father, we give you thanks for all that is abundantly good in our lives. All those blessings that we have that perhaps we don't even realise sometimes. Or perhaps that we take for granted. We thank you for all the wonderful things that you have given us. We thank you, dear Father, for the wonderful people you have surrounded us with. We thank you, dear Father, for the wonderful times that we've had and the wonderful times you have set before us. We thank you, Lord, for your love, for your redeeming power and the promises and hopes you have set before us all. And make our voices one with all your people in heaven and on earth. And collect for today. Merciful Father, who chose your Bishop Gregory to be a servant of the servants of God, grant that, like him, we may ever long to serve you by proclaiming your gospel to the nations, and may ever rejoice to sing your praises through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen and using whichever version is your preferred choice as our saviour taught us so we pray our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me today. It is a great privilege and pleasure to, to be able to do this uh, together. 
and uh, I look forward to that time when we're together again. Um, just a reminder that uh, we have services at half past nine at Stratton, South Marston and Stanton on Sunday and of course we have our 10 o'clock, 10.30, 10 o'clock um, online service as well. I hope you have a great day and uh, I leave you with just a piece of music from the uh, List Chief Ordinary Radicals app. This is Praise to the Lord Almighty. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh, my soul, praise Him, for He is thy help and salvation. All ye who hear, bow to His temple, draw near. Join me in glad adoration. So, Pippa... Uh, obviously likes that hymn and is drawn to the cross what a sacrilegious cat she might be um yeah you shouldn't do that have a great day and may may the peace of the lord christ go with you wherever he may send you may he guide you through the wilderness and protect you through the storm may he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you may he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors God bless and keep you this day. I'll see you soon. Yes. See you later.